Welcome everyone. How is everybody doing? How is everybody doing on this Friday? Let's see, we're at October the 23rd, 2015. How is everybody doing? Shalasia Israel online time to talk. Um, so this first this first part of today, this first part of this um, video, I want to talk about life. Let's talk about life. Why not? Let's get real. You know, the last uh, five years of my life, with everything I've been through, the Heavenly Father has definitely shown me what I was going to need now. What the strength I was going to need now to get through all these things, um, the strength I was going to need now. So, in much amazement, it's no wonder that, you know, you get to points, you go to college, you find out they don't want to hear about the word either. You go to, you know, you've been through high school, all right, you maybe have had some children, and the children have gotten off track. You've went up and down, you've, you've been in a situation where you don't have um, things taken care of as much as you would like finances, so forth, and you get to this point of clarity with the Father. And the Most High tells you, my child, you must trust me fully. Um, this is that time period. This is time, time period not just for myself, but many. Uh, I will say, though, for myself, this is a definite time period. Um, I've had to be refined and learned about seasoning, true seasoning, what salt really means, what light really means, understanding, discernment, all of it. With all that being said, this is a time where even on YouTube, I'm not going to have many views, and yet I'm still going to speak, and it's interesting, because there's all truth in this. Every video Every single thing that has been taking place on this certain site that you're looking at has been from the Father. And He has allowed me to share personal experiences. He's allowed me to share um, His thoughts He's given to me to write down and speak. He's given me a great deal of authenticity of who I am. And being the spiritual person that you want to be does mean there's going to be a low point where things might change. So this may be the last time that I do videos today. If you have not responded to writing me a message or saying you would like a copy of the book, then that's fine. I have received one response. So thank you, Glenn. Thank you. So um, for those that do subscribe to this channel, it would be a building and uplifting to all of us if we're all on one accord. For those that are just tuning in and they're asking questions because they're of a different faith, or they're not a, a believer of Christ, Messiah, and, and they're not interested in that, or they're um, not even interested because they want me to, to be a certain way in a Hebrew setting, I'm going to be all of me, which is just who I am, daughter of light. Okay? And I'm a child of the Most High, and I have understanding and biblical uh, reasoning when I speak and when I write messages to anyone. So we're going to get kind of on a different, different level here. Um, so I just a few experiences because, like I said, uh, because of finances um, and many, you know, there's many out there. We're not going to talk about the falsehood, but there's many out there that. Uh, just they're doing it for money, and uh, even if I this was if let's say this was for money, let's say that I made a video about money, actual money, I would get fifty cents because I don't get many subscribers. I get subscribers that truly are with me in this. We are walking down the narrow path together. So, anyway, to make a long story short, I'm gonna, I'm just going to talk about a few experiences. I'm going to share a few stories with you, and. Um, it interests me on how much I learned from college that was more about life 
than just memorizing. You know what I mean? Memorizing what they want you to know, things like that. So, you know, I wrote this. This was for my writing class that I had at the time. Um, language was huge to me. So language and writing is huge to me. Reading, um, being able to translate uh, different languages for the Holy Word, or being able to translate so that I can bring someone to Messiah. So that's important. But there's many other things we can talk about, too, um, in life. Okay, many things obviously affect us. So this is something I wrote um, this is last year, November of last year. Living space. The space in which I live is a bit small. At this moment, it's because of waiting on some projects in the home to come during vacation. Although the space is colorful and joyful to rest, I do not have to change my decoration. <clears throat> Excuse me, approaching hard winter to come. The living space which a person occupies is so important to maintain peace and tranquility in that space. My new living space will reflect my lifestyle by precious stones and cinnamon sticks and incense. <laughs> this is where I was then. Interesting. I had showed you on last, that last video where I had a decoration my daughter made of sand and then I had some uh, vanilla and cinnamon incense sticks in there. I actually have a stone that's obsidian, and it's what I had, um, <coughs> excuse me, flip napping, if you know what that is, from archaeology, and I had done that in college recently when I was last in college. Now, um, I also says that I would have peace and tranquility. My new living space would reflect my lifestyle, which is cloth and my heavenly father. So it's no more, you know, idol worship or no more princess uh, Buddha pictures or any kind of, um, uh, let's see, how should I say, things about meditation or anything like that. Um, there's nothing even idolizing Messiah in a way that's not uh, loving him. Do you know what I'm saying? But speaking of God rather than knowing there's a father and there's a son. So many, many tra things had transpired. Now, this was last year I wrote this because I, already, I was awake and knew how I'd been feeling and thought, you know, a cloth is huge to a Hebrew, especially cloth. You know, um, linen and things and, and being warm and just covering yourself. So I knew that was going to be huge for me. Okay, so I went on to say, Precious stones and cinnamon sticks and incense. Now, I do appreciate my living space with lots of reading material, which is interesting because I do like to read. You know, I have holy words in pretty much every room of this house except for the restroom. Um, yeah. It says the holy word and my family will all, with all the cloth and beautiful linen flowing over me, to keep warm and content. And I moved in, I wrote this November the 24th, 2014. I moved in my my home, new home on December 22nd. And I'd ask the Heavenly Father, please let us have a home before their pagan Christmas holiday, three days before I moved in. These, these, things, these are things that you receive and you know they're blessings. And you appreciate them so much. And you go back and you reflect on what you've written and how things have taken place. Because I actually have cloth on my wall. You know, beautiful, like, little blankets and things like that. So with beauty. And so that, to me, that was important. Okay, so moving on. I wrote this paper in college, okay. This is recently when I was in college. And it was a writing piece. And it was obedience to authority. And what's interesting is she didn't. She didn't like, she, she failed the actual paper because she said, the Heavenly Father, the God Almighty, Alpha and Omega, cannot be the authority of all obedience. Excuse me with my throat analogies. Isn't that interesting? But I knew different. And you know what? She took me aside and ended up telling me this very fact, that she didn't have faith. And I understood what college was like then, too. Okay. I'm going to read this. Um, this is just, this was a rough draft. This is what I had written. I want to share it with you. It's actually very long. Um, 
So we might just read some parts of this, but I, I was just talking about obedience to authority. Now, this was also written last year, too, in November. From Jerusalem to Jericho, a study of situational and dispositional variables that at one time was a real story, a rise and fall because of disobedience. Now, this is about the walls of Jericho at that time, but I, we were doing a study case on this gentleman, and um, people being tormented or, or different individuals being um, told that they had to be a, uh, receive electricity in their body and see how long they would take it if someone would actually do it and, uh, and obey authority of government or obey authority of someone in charge, or would they have would they find some other way to be obedient? This is what my response was. Okay. A rise and fall because of disobedience. Obedience is essential for life to be stable. However, this is possible only under our Creator's rule. Not to conspire against weakness by confusion or having obedience to the proper authority. Rather, I'd like to insist on a clear, candid response to the rights of being obedient as a strength to proper authority. There once was a response to such questions by Stanley Milgram, a student of great study and articulate stature. He formulated the idea that having a possibility of social order does in fact depend upon acceptance to willingly surrender to following the leader from a higher stature of di dictatorship. There are several examples of how this happens or is possible and who have to submit in order to have a, a unified obedience. Truth is revealed in the Holy Word as the character of Christ and his teachings and all his promises. For anything that does not agree with the Holy Word of truth is false and error, deception and heresy. Even though his famous quote is believed by many, I must guide you to reflect for a moment of what side to this fact that many are not believers and are atheists, which I have always known to mean, kind of like quote, they do have to believe in something to not believe that God exists. Over centuries, many, many gods have been in existence, including the god of this world. Idols of worship, such as Buddha, Greek god and goddesses, Egyptian god and science gods, including love and money. Love for money. The one ideal that has not been believed in is the one most high, true Heavenly Father, Almighty, Alpha and Omega, as one God that is the God I am speaking of. People should be weary of their beliefs that truth is not absolute in the Holy Word. Where did this concept originate? It came from Satan. The Father lies. References to a concordance is in John 8.44. There was a study by Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, Volume 27, July of 1973, in which 40 theology students were put in an emergency situation and then their behaviors were studied just like the parable of the Good Samaritan. Results were based on how much love from biblical teaching they actually had lived in their life experiences to follow the golden rule. Some may argue against this puzzling thought expressed. So I'd like to get to go right into research from literature written, written from a military major with a degree in psychology books of how this very thing is attainable. Now, I just want to reiterate, reiterate here because in this area where I had mentioned this about this particular sergeant was because my instructor was telling me in college that, no, you have to have the all... Uh, theological background on this or you have to have somebody with a secular background who believes the way you do. So I found a gentleman that wrote a book that used to be a military sergeant and that's where I got the information from and even then she went ahead and passed me through the class but because of that written um, and rewritten and then my final draft because of that she did not want to give me anything but a C in the class. And I started with A. had an A until I told her that the authority is going to be the almighty God. Wow. <laughs> you know? And here we're in these moments right now where we are. And it, sharing this with you reminds me of how stressed I was about getting this degree on business or degree on something. Instead, I just need to study language. And I've been writing, you know, doing calligraphy for so long. And a lot of that is used for Hebrew. And it's amazing. Um, even, you know, I, you can write Chinese with your calligraphy pen. My point is is that 
everything that you have been through, where you are right now is not, it is getting you and has got, has put you in a process to the place you are now and who you are now and your walk in life now. You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so. He speaks of a group peop, group of people who with love and genuine respect for the Father disassociate the concept being a problem with obedience to authority if is possible. Many people believe that science can reveal truth by Kathy Sykes, a British psych physicist professor at the University of Bristol. Explains, science is not about truth, but is about trying to get closer to the truth. This is important because too often people look to scientists for complete truth. Amazing. And she says, what we have is wrapped in uncertainties, cavities, and simplifications. Winston Churchill once said, the truth is inconvertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. Former President Ronald Reagan states, and I even used a quote from Ronald Reagan, and I didn't want to put politics in anything. But it's interesting because how biblical prophecies line right up with the things that are going on right all over the world. And even with this, I just, still she didn't like it, and I think it actually made her mad just because of the fact that I challenged her on it. This walk and the, and the light that we receive is light of Christ and um, it's amazing how so many are fearing and scared of what's about to take place and things are taking place here on the earth and just in writings when they receive something in writing they don't want to accept that and even in writing but if somebody like say the Pope or somebody like um, the royal family or something says hey do this or let's believe this they believe believe it like that that's amazing so I spent a time and these are a couple other things I want to tell you too when I cover my head and I want to tell you about some of the things that took place for me this week um, oh we have to love him with all our heart we have to really walk with him because there's no other way I mean, there's just no other way that we're going to get through this like that. So, okay, let me continue. So it says, former President Ronald Reagan stated, American, American yearn to explore life's deepest truths. He went on to say, within the covers of that single book, in quote, the Bible, you can see right here, I put it in quotations, it's exactly how Ronald Reagan at that time wrote it. Now, whether or not we're not going to say that there weren't uh, presidents that were into witchcraft or witches or Canaanites or um, Edomites or do you understand what I'm saying from the seed of, of, of the devil himself you know who was a serpent okay who came as well was Lucifer and they still want to say that it is not going to be like that because we know that's not true we have to worship the true father but my point is to you that there are a lot of people that are not who you think they are, especially government officials, military, um, presidents, presidents' wives, things like that. There's a lot of controversy on who they really are and what they, what their mind really is, especially if you've got any kind of other possession inside of you, right? And they're dealing with double-edged swords all the time. They're constantly, their tongue is slithering, they're constantly going one way and then going another way. Double-minded. I've seen a lot of that with Hillary and all that situation. So just saying. Okay, but um, back to this. Okay, so you only get a few minutes of political mind and, and talking. We, we will do that from time to time. But it's just that's how he actually wrote it. That's how he actually quoted it in, in that comment. <clears throat> I'm sorry, those are brackets. Sorry. In brackets, Bible. Are all the answers to all the problems that we face today. If we would only read, tr trust, and believe. These groups of people make up the population today, and many respect their views with years of servitude and research. And two examples point to numerous of individuals who in the past have provided this argument as truth from a biblical aspect. And then I'd like to prove the opposite side of individuals who have disobeyed not by following rules of obedience that have failed to prove they have had, excuse me, they, that they have obeyed the law of state. But by using these two comparisons, I will show you the contrast of both theories in question. True obedience can only be achieved by obedience to the Creator as one world in unity. 
Now see, I didn't mean one world religion. I meant one world in unity under the Messiah, under our king that will be ruling, King Malek, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Christ, and then his father, right? And that Holy Spirit. Now here's the interesting thing. At that time, we were talking about what would it be like if technology took over? What would it be like if there were robots? What would it be like if everybody was, you know, how could we get one world religion? I thought that was strange. We were talking about that in class. That's why I brought that up. There's only one way to truly achieve that obedience. So I say, in the scripture, Nahum, I'm going to go ahead. Sorry, because I didn't realize there were so many scriptures in here. Uh, I just want to make sure I cover my head up, especially if I'm going to talk about spiritual things on this level. Okay, so... In the scripture, Nahum 3, 1, says, Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. Its victim never parts. And then there in Nahum 3, 6, which says, I, excuse me, that was Nahum 3, 1, chapter 3, verse 1. And then we have Nahum 3, verses 6, says, I will cast abominable filth upon you, make you vile, and make you a spectacle. These are two quoted biblical stated scriptures referring to our Heavenly Father. The Creator who expressed to the nations as to what type of obedience we as people would see in the streets. If we are disobedient to this law and that disobedient would result in a cast away abomination. This one description would be a form of dangerous disobedience for the highest dictatorship. The definition of dictatorship means to influence others. It means to maximize complete control over others as a na on a national level. Now, at that time, I, I wasn't quite at that point of saying, okay, there's, they want to make a one-world religion. I mean, I knew it, but I'm saying, look where we are now. And I wrote this last year. This is why I say the things that we've been through the last five years of the Heavenly Father, He's been preparing me for this time of maybe having to flee to the mountain, maybe and waiting to be caught up and knowing no money, you know, not working in full time ministry, um, not enough to take care of things, but the Heavenly Father has blessed us. He's made sure that we're fed every day. He's made sure that we have a roof over our head. No matter if you receive donations, whether you do or you don't, you rely on Him. And when you rely on Abba the Father, He provides for you, whether someone helps you or they don't, and it, it comes from Him. So when someone does help, even if the food bank is helping you, which has helped me, you're receiving it from someone. And he puts down his Holy Spirit upon them and touches their heart to do so. Okay? Let me continue. I would like to take a moment to share truth found in Micah chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. These four verses have described to a people having pain from Zion, and that if as a people we listen and come out of anger and destruction to ourselves and others, there will be redemption for these same people. To redeem one from a wrong course is to establish divine ruling by an orderly, compatible union with a nation of people. See, I challenged the idea that no one was coming up with, especially in class. You guys listen, especially in the class, the course outline. They, they couldn't take the idea that I knew that there was an answer to the world. And at that time, there wasn't what's going on now. It wasn't Russia going over Syria it was and, and dealing with them, with Syria, helping Syria out and saying they're getting the terrorists out of there. It wasn't Turkey. It wasn't um, United States being the way they're being and, and, and also... Um, coming straight out and, and, and those telling, for example, yesterday, excuse my last comment, let me rephrase this, there were not things going on in the world like now. For instance, not just with Russia, okay, and what is taking place, and, and him talking to Syria, and also Turkey, we're talking, okay, we're talking about that yesterday, Vladimir Putin, okay, so he was speaking in front of societies about peace and about what war is. And he was saying United States, how United States was deceiving and diluting. And that, that's what I got out of the, the whole entire 30 minutes he was talking. I don't know how many folks have seen that because they took that off the main news line. And I get news from three different places, especially internationally in Israel. Oh, and then over in the, the other area of Middle East um, and Jerusalem. So what I want to express to you is that things weren't taking place like they were, like they are now. But at that time, everyone in class still couldn't understand. They were like, 
oh wow, what if we do have terrorists? What if we do have some attack? What if something does happen, right? So they were automatically saying, how can we have peace? And it was interesting because I was working with a girl who was sitting next to me who was Muslim. And you know what? Her spiritual, she had no idea who the father was. No idea who the father was. No idea. Would say, oh, you just, you like who you like, and I'll like who I like, we worship, and everything's fine. No, it's never going to be that way because we have to be, the last church has to be under Christ, Messiah. It has to be, um, because he's in us and he's in our heart, okay, in our, our spirit. It is through him and how he is going to reign. We can't have all these religions together and make it, but that's the false sense of security they get. And they didn't like that I was able to understand that. Because they had no faith. All right. It says, going much further in depth about how obeying rulers rather than our creator brings about many ruins. Because as human beings, we can, we can't, we can by self-absorbed, materialistic, overworked employees that ultimately might lead us to disobedience as children disobeyed a parent's father, parental father, who needs correction. Now, there are various forms of servitude to God, some may say. However, if, that does not, if one does not believe in a Heavenly Father, then let past examples be the example to follow. As past examples show us about counsel, not letting go, Joseph and his people the Lord insisted upon, then Pharaoh's nation were found with cursed plagues upon themselves while living in Egypt on earth. And I was relating this, this was a side note, excuse me, this is a side note. I was relating this because of the fact, saying, Joseph, he, he was doing what the Heavenly Father wanted him to. At the same time, had received honorable positions with Pharaoh, honorable positions. He said, let my people go. He had faith. He said, let my people go. And he, they said, no. Things changed for them. They were cursed, right? Well, Micah 5, 11 through 15, it states, I will cut off the cities of your land and throw down all your stronghold. I will cut off sorcerers from your land, from your hand. And you shall have no soothsayers. Your carved images I will cut off and your sacred pillars from your midst. You shall no more worship the work of your hands. I will pluck your wooden images from your midst. Thus I will destroy your cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury on the nations. This is considered the wrath of the Almighty Hand, whom he refers himself to the first and beginning and the end the first and the beginning, the end and last of all things. And I use this because without that faith, without even a faith of mustard seed, even my instructor was unable to understand how could this be possible that you could say that there is a beginning. And even though she knew about the Holy Word, she knew what it said in there. She knew. It was her faith that misguided her. It was her faith. She had no faith. Excuse me. Not her faith misguided her, but not her not having faith misguided her with her thoughts. And therefore decided to grade me the way she did because, and if you look at this, this was my retype version. There was only two sentences that were that needed a little bit of work. So my point to you is, after proofreading, after rewriting, after doing my final draft, it, was, it came down to what? We do not want you to speak such things. And it's the same way the world is going to get you guys. It's going to get to the point where you're not, they're not going to want you to speak, so they're going to want to quiet everyone up who loves Messiah, okay? Who truly loves Messiah. And then what is that going to cause, okay? It's going to cause many to, what, lose their life that were not um, caught up in the air, right? Okay? These are the things that we really have to understand. The, this is the times we're living in. Let me just go ahead and read a little bit more of this. There are quite a number of vicious news reporters in today's time that clearly mark how obedient to a regime full of fire and covetousness will lose their way by use of control and anarchy for reasons set out for people who have convictions of truth and righteousness to hate 
and to show this by harm with diligence of violence. This dangerous disobedience shown by the jihad group heading towards Syria in the area of Israel, who are not the true Jews cited in today's new channel and CNN today who want independent control by force toward other individuals are not under that are not under proper properly God's rule. And what's interesting, she had also said to me, well, can't write anything about that because it's saying you, you don't want to talk about Muslims. You, you want to say that there's this uh, one group. Yeah, there was a terrorist group, but whether or not the United States started that, whether or not they were supporting it, whether or not it came from the help of the United States, where, whatever that is, I still wanted to mention, yes, a lot of these groups, because why? Terror, uh, not terrorists, but violence starts the violence. Why? Because it's a vicious malice in your heart wanting to do something to someone else. That's why only one body of Christ will go. The one that loves him, wants to meet him in the clouds, the ones that wants to be at the wedding feast, the ones that want to escape the wrath on earth. And if you truly think about it, there are a lot of, a lot of individuals saying, oh, no, no, oh, no, we're going to go through tribulation. But I'm saying great tribulation. They're like, oh, you're going to have to get your head beheaded and get your head cut off. The thing is, is can you imagine how many would have their heads beheaded? If right now we're already walking as much narrow path as we can possibly in this flesh, that we're still a part of in this body, it would make no sense. The scriptures tell you exactly what's going to happen. So anyway, I just made a few more comments on here. Um, I also said on here, today there are peaceful Muslims who want to rally for unity and peace, just as in the days of Malcolm X and Gandhi, who believe this world can function well with peace. However, it will not work unless under the Holy Bible's rule from our Most High Creator. So unless they are worshiping the same Father, it wouldn't work anyway. That was my point. We see that even Martin Luther King could not com completely unite the whole world of nations by how he directed things because they were men not under God's rule in complete order, but under man's rule as leaders. Because if they were under complete order, they would have to be Messiah. Because that's the only order that's going to happen on this earth, is Messiah coming and taking care of it. That's just the truth. That's where we are, right? So, uh, even activists and religious leaders fighting for truth and justice still do not meet eye to eye. Because they're not of one accord, but separate, as this whole world is today. Everyone wants control, and that type of obedience is not logical, and, so, and it's self-righteous. And that is why under one commander-in-chief justice and obedient, the obedience will occur. It, it brings others harm not being taught, as I mentioned earlier, to obey the one creator who instructed the law. The mischief I do speak of in the headlines news today, uh, taking place in Israel, is because of our brother's our brother Israel, choosing the worldly nations and not living the proper protection of the Father of all creation. That's not to say they're not Israelis, because there are brethren in Israel that love the Messiah. Okay, um, But this time I was writing strictly about the case of what what is showing of those that are just fully wanting to know politics and want to be an ambassador or want to... Um, receive guidance from someone they think is a king or some leader that is a prime minister and thinking that that's going to change and solve things. It's not. And look what we're dealing with now. Look what's happening over by Damascus and coming into Damascus. Look at the things that are taking place now. Okay, look at the things that are taking place now. And this was last year I was writing about this. Look where we are now. So, um, many may argue that government must intervene in such a horrible, critical time. Examples have shown us over time that disobedience can cause one to dismiss higher respect for the, mo for the one most high. Almighty to be insubordinate to subordinates lower than he. We have seen this for many centuries and man has never been able to unite anyone under his rule in his world resulting from improper obedience, giving allegiance to oneself, wanting control of others without pure unity, being beat into submission from police brutality to jihad wanting to conquer people for loving the word of the Messiah, and Jews from Judaism 
not true Jews living under control of lies and deception or a person making others obedient to their laws when in fact they themselves are not obedient to the real biblical law. Meaning, if you're lying about being who you are, you're saying you're of a tribe and you're not, or you're saying you're, um, you are someone who you're deceiving others because you want control, that right there is showing that they're not staying obedient to the biblical law. And biblical law, not meaning the whole law, meaning to love thy neighbors thyself and to follow the Father's commandments, not just the Ten Commandments, to follow his commandments to love. Okay, to follow his commandments of um, observing who you are in Christ. So this is what I was writing at that time. Original laws were not meant to be broken, and yet we see them broken every day by the same organizations in charge to help others keep true to the law of obedience. Now you know we were to write them in our hearts, because after that time, once you understand Sabbath, then you write them in your heart. You're writing that in your heart. And what I was trying to express here is that everyday people and people in organization societies break the law all the time. They, they break the biblical understanding law to live by thy father's works. And how, not his works, to live by thy father's um, law statutes and commandments. And that's what they're breaking. Uh, these are reasons to think as a critical thinker. To resist obedience by disobedience is harmful and detrimental, says Ph.D. psychologist Diane Barmrind. Consider the experiment harmful regarding human behavior. She studied this behavior for students on paper who had a response to the word teacher to express how some may at times have a condition to disobey when they are in reality obeying to a higher obedience. And so I was just explaining, yes, the psychologist said this and I agree with her. And she doesn't believe in Christ, but I believe with her, right? Because at this time, me being, you saying I'm not obedient to your class, I'm being disobedient, no, not to your class, I'm being obedient to the Father by coming in with the word of truth. So if you are in college, you're teaching, you've got to keep to the, the truth. You have to. And when you do that, you're set free because you're then saying, oh my goodness, I am following what the Father wants me to do. Even when I'm in class, even when I'm in college or when I'm teaching. It's the same thing. I had an archaeology course, and the instructor was Jewish, but she was an atheist. I said, I'm a Hebrew, and I love Messiah, and I believe in him, and he was on earth. And I talked about that in class. Okay? I, I, archaeology is not for me, because most of the time it ends up being evolution, ends up being... Um, Evolution, atheism, scientific, how should I say, excuse me, sociology, uh, I understand, okay, but on a biblical level, they're teaching you not to believe that there was a father or a holy word, that there wasn't a Torah, that there wasn't the commandments written, that Moses never existed, all these things. But there were people 15 million years ago, 1 million years ago, and apes and things. You know, I mean, not everyone believes that, but it's really hard to get through a complete degree of archaeology and not somehow be influenced. So, couldn't do that. That wasn't for me, me either. You see, that wasn't something the Father wanted me to finish either. It was language. It was the ability to communicate and to, and to translate his holy word, to speak to those that wanted to be um, in Messiah's heart and wanted to learn the truth. And that's what this was about. So all this kind of just, you know, this is where things get really twisted up in this world. Many get into wanting prosperity conferences and they want money off uh, speaking about the Father and everything. It's not like donations to help with the ministry and help someone just get by. Uh, some of us have said if you would like to donate to the ministry, to the teenagers, to the seniors, to those sort of things, for those, you know, those articles to be written, donate. But what happens is, is there's a lot of people out there, especially on the internet, you think there's somebody who's talking to you about the Father and the Messiah and the Holy Word and expressing something, and they turn out to be someone who's just looking for money, just like everything that's going on in the world today. I mean, if you, if you are not seeing the last days, 
and I get real close to the screen right here. If you're not seeing the last days, oh, if you're trying to explain to someone we are in the last days, I mean, you need to take them actually through news. You need to take them through history. You need to take them in prayer and pray for them and tell them this is the seriousness of this. We are in these last days. Wake up. And if someone doesn't wake up to it, they're going to find what's going to happen. They're going to be on the wrong side of the fence, wrong side of the, the path. It's going to be on a broad and spacious leading straight to never, never beautiful land, but horrible, horrible destruction. All right. Let's see. Let me go ahead and finish with this. So by looking at these examples and actually documenting studies, we, have under, we can understand basic logic as it is in regard to profound written actions of wise men who were, and many today, are willing to submit our actions to follow obedience to keep social order. So they, they want to, and that's where the new world religion came in out. They would rather do what? These people saying they're wise, but they have no wisdom. They just have this knowledge of memory and reading things and looking like they're saying something important. And what happens? They're wanting social order, and that's control. That's where all these things come into play that, are, that we're headed towards. And if you don't have the Heavenly Father as your one and only source of what you're going to do in life, you're not going to make it. If, you don't, if you're not walking behind Messiah, if you're not following Him, we're not going to make it. If you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to fully come into our lives, we're not going to make it. Excuse me with the hiccups. It's submission. And so we're obedient to the Heavenly Father, which means eternal life. And that's what they don't want you to understand. They want you to just listen to the majority rules. So I want to have a phone. So I might not have a computer anymore. No vehicle. Sometimes borrow a vehicle, but not a vehicle of my own anymore. So you cannot just go buy whatever you want to eat. You use and, and, and eat enough to sustain the body and do what you have to do. Sometimes we have to fast in the Word. We have to fast with the Father in prayer. These are good times to really, really hear what the scriptures are saying to us. And there's sometimes we have to just write. Writing is, you know, if you have some paper, it's free. It comes from your mind and your heart. And it'll make sense to you later on. It's a good time to journal. It's a good time to start writing. Writing down scripture, going back and looking at it, dissecting it, looking up words. It's a good time for that. This can be accomplished by surrendering our hearts to the Most High. This can be done by resisting abusive, violent thinking about our Creator and each other in truth by becoming a civilized person, people from beginning to end as we are under His rule. He is willing and able to cause the people of this world to submit in some form or fashion. He's willing because He allows us to make a choice, but it will come to that point we have to make that choice. And I believe this, this month, this is it. To make a choice on which way we're going. So talk to all you can, as quickly as you can, about the Father and Messiah. The Holy Word does hold true truth because the perfect man who came to earth told us that his in his word and truth of his mouth was perfection. He was the word before he became flesh, before he became man. Words are important. They're important. They're descriptive. Language is important. We communicate that way with our mouths. Okay? Prophecy has taught us everything to this very day. And even if, you know, so I could say this was a witness. This was a witness to this professor. And that's what, what the Father really wanted me to do, was be able to tell her this. And then let her go on that. And hopefully she would turn to Christ, to the Messiah. Prophecy has taught us everything to this day. National movements have never shown unified obedience over all humankind, humanity. Excuse me. The thesis that had been given to you today is a symposium of theory. And hopefully proved by research of studies and theories versus documentation of God's words written in black and white and red letter that you could 
understand the true meaning of the word of God. So, so, see, she had to get this from, she had to hear from a psychologist, she had to hear from a written book of a militant, she had to hear from Ronald Reagan, she couldn't just hear the truth. That's why our, we're opening our eyes and our Father tells us and He teaches us, and as we learn, either someone's going to hear this when we speak or they're not, okay? They make the choice on that. In my logical research opinion... Obedience to authority is essential for life to be unified. However, only under our Creator's rule. That's what I wrote on that. just want to share that with you guys. A different, different outlook on things where we're, we're going with this. Um, but remember, get you a journal. Sticky notes. Just start writing. If you, if you don't have a chance, start writing. Um, I do want to say... You know, our eyes have to be open to what's going on. I, I listened to uh, Vladimir Putin on his 30-minute discussion, and he made it he made it plainly clear. Um, pretty much, excuse my laptop there, my computer. Um, he actually right there described what the United States has been doing. And, and the reason why I speak this is because there's biblical messages with everything. I've been going into Zechariah. The Father wanted me to read Zechariah to understand something about another brethren that I had been writing to. And it made complete sense. And I felt the Father tell He needed to read every single chapter. I read 14 chapters yesterday. And I had to study it and I had to understand what the Father was trying to tell me. And I told you, I did have this dream about the flood um, in the spiritual realm, so it will be will come to pass in the the uh, natural world. Don't know exactly when, but what's important is that we pay attention and we listen to what the Heavenly Father is telling us. We and, and Messiah, when we hear his when we hear his voice, we follow. He's going to direct us now, really direct us. We need to really be paying attention to how we are becoming in our personality and communicating and praying for others and reading the word and fasting in it and really researching the words really really understanding what what the Messiah is trying to tell us let's never take it for granted um, time is really short you guys all right so I'll be making some more videos there should be about three of these and some birds I'm trying to edit it and figure it out on how to put the picture in there and everything. So it may just be two minutes of music and birds in the background to introduce the, the little video I made talking about the birds outside. The most beautiful thing happened a couple of days ago, and I'm telling you, I know the Father's there with me. He's there with you too, and we all can encourage each other, right? So leave a comment or question below. And I pray that this has been um, helpful to you guys. When I pray for you, if you need a prayer, let me know. I don't have my phone on right now. So if you need a prayer tonight, please email me at capital A, lowercase l-e-s-j-a-h, capital T, at gmail.com. And I will respond after I pray over it. And then I will give you back a message, okay? On, Sh on Shabbat, the Sabbath tomorrow, okay? So I really hope you get this message and many are able to be this. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead. You know, if you, if you are uh, someone of a listening ear. All right, you guys? Take care and have a wonderful day. All right, shut up.